Seven years ago, the TV comedy series about a modern-day Chinese couple's emotional entanglements, a beautiful daughter-in-law era, became a hit in Tanzania. Even Chinese President Xi Jinping referred to the series when he visited the country in March 2013, saying the show helps the Tanzanian people to understand the happiness and sadness of uh, ordinary Chinese people. Seven years later, in 2018, Africans in Iwu, a documentary co-produced by a team of Chinese and African filmmakers that explore the work and life of Africans in China, also won acclaim. So how have film and television transcended geographical distance and connected the hearts and minds of the Chinese and African people? What is the significance of cultural exchanges as uh, China-Africa ties take on greater importance. Welcome to a special roundtable edition of The Point with me, Lu Xin, coming to you from Beijing. Joining me today are Professor Martin Mahandel from Tanzania, director of the Zanzibar International Film Festival in Tanzania, Hamed Ashraf from Egypt, CEO of the GB Times Egypt and Vibration Studios Corporation, and Alpha Sado Gano, a director, fixer, producer, and chief of the Industrial Techniques Office of uh, the Film and uh, Photography Bureau of Senegal. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Thank you. Welcome to Beijing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I, I, nice weather too here. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So um, tell us a bit about the kind of picture we are seeing in terms of uh, TV, radio and film cooperation and exchange between China and Africa. For instance, in Tanzania, uh, are we seeing a lot of Chinese um, works in this regard? Yeah, I think, uh, like you said at the beginning, when you said about the seven years, uh, seven years ago with the Maudodo and uh, Wakazake, which was a revolution in Tanzania in the sense that uh, it was one of the very, early, the very first uh, TV dramas that were translated and dubbed into Kiswahili. And that was a major a change because in the past, uh, historically, we've seen TV series coming from all over the world, but they were all still being done in their languages. And most of them would be dubbed if they were, for, for example, we had Filipino series which were dubbed into English and from Mexico and from Spain. But for the first time, we saw a, a foreign series dubbed into Kiswahili, into the language. And I think that's exactly what changed the whole uh, uh, approach to, uh, to foreign uh, reception of films in Tanzania. Do you, would you understand, do you understand the effort, the idea behind uh, translating this film into the local language instead of into English? Exactly. I think that was the key element. I mean, that as soon as uh, the Chinese side recognized the fact that if you wanted to communicate with a with, with wider audience, mm -hmm. especially the wider African uh, audience, which does not speak a foreign language like English or French, or whatever, the language that you hit them, you, you meet with them, is the local language. And when, when, when Swahili started to, to be heard from across the screen by Chinese, mm -hmm. people went, oh, do they speak Swahili there? <laughs> no, they don't speak Swahili, but here we can actually understand the were emotions. They, were they dubbed by Chinese people speaking Swahili or African no, people? No, they were African people African speaking Swahili. Yeah, yeah. But so people could recognize that uh, beautiful Swahili coming from across the, you know, uh, that little oh, with the Chinese, the Chinese face. face and the language, do they? Yes, and they kept on going closer to this subject. Mm. And I think it was that emotional tie with the language that brought the audiences closer. But again, of course, the whole idea of talking about the humanity, the, the human relations, the stories were very much human relation, uh, relation stories. Mm. People uh, immediately identified with the characters, they could see, they could feel the pain, they could feel how they would have reacted if they were, you know, right. faced with that Which condition. is very similar. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, which is very similar. Which is very important to recognize right. that, you know, human beings have, you know, these universal feelings, right. that universal issues that they all face and they, uh, they can understand when somebody else faces that. Right. I think that was key, I think, uh, when you started with that. Was the same TV series also that shown? Was the first, that was the first, and uh, it's exactly the same story. Uh, in, uh, just give you an idea, we have 22 countries under the Middle East which speaks the same language with Arabic. It's, of course, different accents, but we have the classic Arabic which is understood or talked among the 22 countries, a population of almost 500 million people. And we have one satellite channel 
it's covering one satellite covering the whole territory. So once you air a program in one of the satellite channels, you're covering 500 million people speaking the same language. The advantage of the happy life, we called it Haya Saida in Arabic, in Egyptian uh, slang, it was done in uh, uh, not a classic Arabic, in slang Egyptian. And that was the first international program done not in a classic Arabic, in the normal day-to-day -day language used. Uh, and it was a big hit. We were second to uh, main news viewership on the national TV. Wow. So, did, so did you study, did you try to find out exactly what was it? Was it the content? Was it the fact that it was in slang? When uh, we started, in when the we started the, that was our first Chinese drama we ever seen. Hmm. Uh, so the people were curious about the Chinese I'm, I'm not talking about the people now, I'm talking about the stuff. You know, the director, the actors who mm. did the dubbing. Mm. When we started translating the script from Chinese to Arabic, we were amazed that the day-to-day -day life is almost the same. We, we say we are all from the East. We are a very old culture, Egypt and China. So we found out that the smallest, tiniest details we have very much in common. We thought you are so different mm -hmm. than us. But the day-to-day, -day, you know, the mother-in-law acts, Mm -hmm. What she does to her <laughs> daughter-in-law exactly is exactly the same. So, aside of the features, then we have a very Egyptian drama. Mm. That, that was a maze to us at the beginning, and that was so much accepted. We had people calling, saying, is this done, Chinese drama, done on an Egyptian script for the Egyptian market, or this is a normal Chinese life? So to that, to that extent. Yeah, to that extent. And, wow. since, and since we haven't stopped, I mean, I would say that Egypt, we've done hundreds and hundreds of hours for uh, drama and movies, and it's very successful right mm -hmm. now in, uh, in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. yeah. But looking ahead now, we are 2018, right? That, that TV series is, is almost a thing of the past, but uh, what kind of efforts are being made to build on that momentum uh, so that uh, more Chinese work can be introduced to the African audiences and more African uh, work can be introduced to the Chinese audiences? Uh, is there anything that you're undertaking that can tell? give us some highlight. Yeah, apart from the works that are still continuing, because we're still dubbing uh, uh, Chinese series. Last year we dubbed another 35 mil, uh, episode uh, series called The Inspiration for Life, uh, which is a very, very beautiful drama as well. Mm -hmm. But also, like you started with in the op opening, there was also the effort at making films about Africa. and for Africans as well. So a step further. It's a step further. I mean, uh, the film uh, Africans in EU, which was produced in, in China, was also shown in, uh, in, in my festival, for example, last year at, at Zanzibar International Film Festival. It was very well received. And then, of course, uh, the, the national broadcaster found, you know, found it at the festival and they, they went into a discussion with the producers and it was shown on on the national broadcaster that, uh, that same year. What are some of the difficulties though, some of the challenges that you have to overcome to, to do that work? I think one of the things that uh, people are still worried is how do we get specific stories from Africa that would actually hit or at least would interest the Chinese market. I think that is very, very, very important because uh, right now, for example, most of the films that have been done in Tanzania but with, that have a kind of a touch with, uh, with China have been around the railway, you know, the building of the railway. But we've never really been able to, to look at what is new. I mean, there are many, many Chinese coming to, make, uh, to, to do business in, in, in Africa right now. But there are hardly any stories about them, about what are their experiences when they come to, to Africa. Uh, I think that we have to promote the cultural exchanges between the two countries, uh, or Africa and China. China. Because what we knew uh, now, it is just promoting business between China and African countries. What is important, in 2030, we started in, with the Chinese embassy in Senegal to promote a weekend of film projection in Dakar. But it, 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 it didn't happen. My hope is that we can show some Chinese films in a weekend and also in China we show. We have to, to have this action to watch or to show some films, African film in China and Chinese film in Africa. That 
when we show all the population can see and can appreciate but the partnership is more than in business than in culture mm -hmm. yeah it is my my opinion i think and i think this kind of workshop why we are here can help us to develop the partnership in cultural uh, cooperation and why not in festivals why not a big african film festival in china why not i think that it is possible to have this uh, this exchange to, to to show our potentialities in our cultures yes do I you think, think it might have to do so far of um, maybe the preference of many Chinese people to look to the West in terms of culture, in terms of uh, uh, fashion, in terms of film. Um, they, they, I mean, they, they, they know there is a very close link with Africa now between China, but yet in terms of culture, it seems still to, to rest on the stereotyping. Um, I don't know, Mr. Asharaf. This is a very valid point, and I think it's very important. Uh, you know, uh, most of the Chinese companies we talk about, their interest or they are focusing on European American uh, culture, uh, working together, uh, creating new projects. Uh, and I don't see, personally, I don't know if I'm strong or right, but mm -hmm. I don't see the Chinese interest in those areas. I see it in their in our areas in Africa. We already, uh, for us in Egypt, China is our first ally. We have experienced, you know, colonialism, we have experienced American relation, British relation, European relation, and we now, for the last 10 years or so, we are experiencing the relation with China. Now, China is major Chinese companies in construction, in, uh, in every aspect of our life now, there are Chinese friends helping in a way or another. The relation between the leaders are very strong. So culture relation will introduce Chinese people to Egyptian people and vice versa, and that will complete the picture, and that's what would strengthen the relation. So uh, we are, as uh, individuals, as uh, private companies, we are trying to do that. We are discussing now with a big Chinese uh, production company, a movie, uh, a co-production uh, co movie between uh, a Chinese Egyptian story. Uh, so to start, you know, uh, showing the, the, this kind of relation into Chinese market and uh, Arab markets as well. Okay, we're going to take a very short break and you have been watching a special edition of a roundtable discussion on China, African TV and movie exchanges and cooperation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to this special roundtable discussion on The Point with Mi Xin, and I have three guests here from Africa, from Tanzania, from Egypt and from Senegal to talk about radio film and TV cooperation between China and Africa. So we have been talking about the need to bring Chinese works into Africa and the other way around to bring more African films and, and radio and TV programs to China. So what are some of the uh, the difficulties that you have experienced and you have been thinking about and um, well, I think also Martin. one of the things that we, we probably should be uh, talking about is the people to people links you know currently there's not an exchange of ex experiences in terms of film for example when you, when you get only one, pr one film produced in Africa by, Ch by the Chinese in 10 years, that does not really relate to an exchange. That's only a, you know, a production. What is a possible way out? Have you thought about that? Is it to build a better mechanism to have more exchanges? What, what would it there be? There are two ways that we actually have been discussing. You know. uh, two years ago, we discussed about the possibility of having an Africa-China film festival. And that film festival should not be really done in, non, in one country. I mean, for example, it can be a moving festival that Chinese films okay, and African films, so we package uh, films from Africa, top African films, top Chinese films, package them together and tour them. You know, in Africa? In Africa. And in, in, and in China. And in China. I mean, that's right. a possible you know, way of opening up uh, information, knowledge and understanding between you know, these two parts. Uh, we, we could have, you know, the whole idea was maybe to have it in different years. So one year it's going to be done in, in China, and another year it's going to be in Africa, and in a different place in Africa. It could be in Cairo first year, the second year it's going to be in Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Chinese people don't understand, for example, the strength of film 
in a country like Burkina Faso, the whole country stops when there is the you know Fespaco. Wow. That's how strongly mm -hmm. people believe in film. The whole country stops for that week. They listen, they watch, they enjoy the relationship that Africa has with film. Right. And here's something that we could use to inspire not only Africans, but even the Chinese. Great ideas. Great. I would love to see more African movies that have been made easy to, for me to access. You know, right now, it, if I go to the cinema, I see Chinese movies, of course. I see American movies. And I really have to go to an alternative cinema to be able to see some small production, mostly, I guess, from African. Yeah. Yeah, if so I may uh, tell a very important story, when we dubbed the first Chinese uh, uh, drama to the Egyptian uh, television and uh, we've been invited to the ambassador of China and he gave uh, a little story that uh, during uh, the 40s and 50s in China uh, American European movies I don't think they were accepted in uh, so they they were depending on on other uh, production uh, so Egypt is one of the oldest producers and Egyptian film were at that time 40s and 50s very, very famous popular. in in China and the ambassador said in my childhood I used to go to Egyptian movie and I loved this city Cairo mm -hmm. and I wished that I visited mm -hmm. and now I'm so blessed that I'm the ambassador of my country and this city I've dreamed of as a child this is how important movies is and cinemas yeah. is so this is this is it was very touching to us and we wondered why this is didn't continue why the relation between those kind of nation we say we are all from the east we say from far east to middle east i mean it's it's almost right. the we same we had sort. a lot of movie coming from eastern europe as well yeah. <laughs> yes. from yes. india i remember uh, yes I, the story. The, the, I was here in, in china and back in i think in 2000 and i was talking about the possibility of making a film you know between china and tanzania and one of the directors i spoke to actually had seen the same film that had inspired me to tell the story. You know, it, it, it was a Vietnamese film mm. that was shown in China and Tanzania around the same time during the, the, during the, 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 the political struggles against imperialism. And it was very funny that he was inspired by the same film. So that kind of relationship tells us of how much a film itself could make such an impact. And what I would like to, to add is that to open our frontiers, you know, for cooperation, you have two pol many policies, laws. When you come to, 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 to shoot in China, you have some barriers, you know. Mm. It's, uh, maybe the, two, the government can, yeah, they, they can... Make it so, easier. Yes, yes it is. It is facilitated right. for African uh, filmmakers or production to come to China to because I am here, I have a friend who have a film project, shoot one part in China, but we have all the difficulties to have the good producer or co-producer to, to, to shoot this kind of uh, movie. Point and the taken. Other thing, I hope that is heard. Yeah, the <laughs> Something other thing can is be done in the future. China Africa. is interested by Africa. Mm -hmm. In last year, the film World for Your Profit, you know, World for Your Two, which time World is for Your Two. Yes. It's, we know that it is important, and you saw that in this film, some African languages are used in the film. Right. Yeah. That, yeah, it's important to, to know that it is, yeah, it is possible now. This film proves that it is possible. We can do the best, I think, in the few years uh, coming, yes, I think. I was going to say, what kind of content do you think would be most interesting that can be explored besides, for instance, Africans in China or Chinese in Africa, but what are the stories? I know family stories, as you mentioned, are probably one big theme, but a lot of uh, the Chinese film right now, I mean, you can watch a lot of uh, family TV drama, maybe, yeah. but in terms of films, it's a lot of action also involving Africa. We have Africa. to differentiate between uh, TV drama and, uh, and movies. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, women, ladies, are the most consumers to TV drama. Mm -hmm. So family, feminine uh, love stories is what goes. Mm -hmm. People think first we thought that uh, martial art, kung fu, what is 
you know, the stereotype of what is famous coming that from China. Right. No, that would, wouldn't interest them. But uh, when we talk about uh, serious drama, sad stories, love stories, we've done uh, this uh, earthquake uh, Chinese uh, drama. It was a very, very successful uh, drama. In terms uh, of movie? In terms of movie, we are looking into the... Uh, the American uh, blockbusters movie. So now in China we have similarity on such big uh, production exactly. with big box office. Uh, so, but yet it's, we don't have that on cinemas. We don't have any Chinese uh, on cinemas uh, shown in theaters. So this is important to mm -hmm. to do that. Content-wise, I think one of the things that I really want us to push ourselves is to be able to understand our cultures through laughter. I think we're not laughing enough, you know. And one of the ways to open up a culture is if you can laugh about yourself and laugh about the others as well. And I mean, you know how much a uh, film like uh, Gods Must Be Crazy went all oh, over the I world. I saw that you know? many, many years ago. Exactly. <laughs> I remember it. But now we have relationship between China and Africa, and there's so many things that the people don't understand about each other. Mm -hmm. If we could only laugh about that, that would make huge, you know, when we would have so much content to be able to open ourselves up, to be able to understand ourselves up from this other side, not just the political side to understand how much you know, China is supporting and all that. No, let's talk about how much we laugh at each other, how much when a Chinese arrives in Tanzania, finds so many stupid things and he goes, oh my God, am I ever going to start a business here? And then let's talk about how he gets up to, you know, in the morning and finds so many stupid things happening in that country. And I woke up, you know, I come over here, I also feel little things that I can have a big laugh with. And I think content is not a problem. Mm -hmm. We should be able to find so much content between us. I think it's just we've, we've tied ourselves to a, fo a, a formal way of presenting films and there's always been a Western w way of looking at, at life. And I think China and Africa have been kind of grabbed, they've been made to think that is the only way. And I think we should break the, the mode completely. One important issue, if I very important please, please. issue, uh, Chinese producers, movies or drama, are very satisfied with their local market. You have a huge market. So their main interest, they have been producing for the local market for years and years and years, and the international market is something new to them. So they are not yet interested. It's all the efforts of the government so who is looking for soft power. Chinese, yes. power, uh, Chinese movies have not done so well. I mean, we oh, had exactly. a few blockbusters which really made it, right, made it. But uh, in general, Chinese films have some difficulties going global and becoming really popular. We, we heard that the last example was Great Wall yes, by sir. Zhang Yimou, which was a very bad uh, 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 box record. It's so Worldwide. Well, I don't know yeah. the story in Africa. Is there a great potential to be tapped in? The potential in will be there when the producers, drama or movies, think of the international market. Yeah. They are looking and they are satisfied and they are happy with their local market. Your box office is like 50 billion uh, uh, RMB. So they are not interested. I receive like a presentation for a drama which I need to dub. It's all in Chinese. No, I need it in. Arabic or in English, you know, so I can present that to my local uh, TV stations, right? Uh, we have some technical problems, which are very technical, but for instance, when you do a dubbing, you need what we call a separate audio track. Right. We need the dialogue and the m and &E, which yeah. is the music and the sound effects. Mm -hmm. Here, people, when they do drama, they do... It's are not mixed. Yeah, it's mixed because they are not interested in that. They, they don't keep in their mind that we have an international market to do. Yeah. Then we have to create a similar music or a similar yeah, sound effects. Much to more work. Much more work, very expensive. Sure. So China will take a huge step when the producers start thinking of the international marketing. Mm -hmm. That means packaging and how to introduce it to the market. I, I want to bring up a point here which happened uh, during the Spring Festival Gala this year. I don't know whether you heard there was an African sketch, African uh, themed sketch with a Chinese woman uh, with her face painted black and it drew so much criticism thinking that Chinese people uh, were potentially or were discriminating against African or you know by painting their face black. So I think right now China wants to have more contact with Africans. Um, China 
I think the great majority of Chinese people do not have any negative feeling or discrimination against it. However, they do not know uh, how to behave, let's say, in a, when, when it comes to interacting with Africans. So uh, is there, can you help the Chinese people become more reassured that even if they make a small mistake, uh, it might not be the end of, because if you try, for instance, laughing at ourselves, laughing at Africans, maybe you step into a cultural taboo and really make a fool of yourself. I do not know. I think what we're uh, talking about uh, is to open mind Chinese to think about Africa or the other areas in the, the world, not just thinking Chinese for producing, for producing for Chinese, only Chinese. Mm -hmm. But if they open, it is possible to have African actor, actors or actresses in Chinese movies, why not? It is possible we have this uh, contact with this workshop. It is for that in Senegal or Zanzibar or in Egypt, we can help for casting to have actress and actors playing in Chinese films mm -hmm. if they have their roles, you know. It is very important to know. When they, they think about the other areas in the world, like Africa, it is possible. I think that it is just you need this to keep step. That in your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you write a film, you exactly. you have your area. It is important. I think that it is just a beginning, and it is possible in few years maybe mm -hmm. uh, to to see some Africans playing in Chinese movies and Chinese playing in African movies. Why not? It is possible. But also, I think uh, co-productions and also be co-direction is another way to go because I mean, we we forget the fact that uh, quite a number of the you know, the, the American films, early American films, listened a lot to, to Africans when they, when, they came, uh, when they made their films. And so that way they were able to, to kind of evade those potholes of cultural miscommunication. Because you ask and you go, oh my God, if I touch this area, it might be a little bit nervous. And therefore, you know, Chinese filmmakers should also be, should feel comfortable with asking questions that would make them understand a little bit more uh, of Africa. But the other area I think, I think is also important to recognize in, in terms of producing, even the bigger budget ones, is to think about not producing one showcase film. This is what the Chinese are doing. They're doing, you know, two films that, and, and that's it. No. You, I mean, they, Hollywood, what it does, it's got one big budget, uh, one blockbuster, and, and then ten of the these big ones. Line-up production. Yeah. So, line they, up production. so they, 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 they may lose on the big one, they, but they win in five of these ones, and they make up their money back. Yeah. But the, the, the China production system is, okay, we're going to try one film, you know, for the international market. We'll tell Yang Jimo, you got ten billion dollars, make it, and we'll make it. Yang, Wimo, uh, Yang Jimo fails, and then China goes, oh, should we go back? No, go, yeah, go, go, going. go. Okay, you know? great, great. Yeah. Well, wrapping up, Mr. Ashraf, you have anything to add in terms of uh, any cultural m mishaps that uh, could be a potential I you know, think we've covered the most important. Uh, we're very glad we are here, and we hope that uh, we see you next time for next year with our new workshop and we have more of uh, stories to tell you about the success of Chinese drama and movies in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to wrap it there. Many thanks to my three guests. They have been um, Doc, Professor Martin Mahando from Tanzania, Director of the Zanzibar International Film Festival, um, Hamed Ashraf from Egypt, CEO of GB Times Egypt and uh, Vibration Studios Corporation, and Alpha Gano, a Director and the Chief of Industrial Techniques Office of the Film and Photography Bureau in Senegal. Many thanks to you once again, and many thanks to my audience for having followed us on this special edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. As always, you can Follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with Alex. Download the application called CGTN to watch the show on your mobile devices or go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. Thanks for watching. You've got the point.